Hey everyone, we're going to prove that convergent sequences are bounded. Specifically, we're going to do this in a general metric space, X. So, let's talk about what that means. A metric space is an ordered pair, X and D, where X is a set, and D is a function from the Cartesian product of X with itself to the real numbers, subject to the following constraints. For every three points in your set, the distance between two of them is greater than or equal to zero. If the distance between two of them is zero, that happens if and only if those two points are the same. If you take the distance between x and y, it's the same as the distance between y and x. And finally, if you take the distance between x and another point, it's less than or equal to the distance between x and a third point, and that third point and your second point. So these are just your generalizations of what it means to be a distance function. Uh, distances are non-negative. Uh, distances are zero if and only if you're measuring the distance between a point and itself. No two points are next to each other, coincide, that are not the same point. Uh, it doesn't matter if you measure the distance between point A and point B or point B and point A. doesn't matter which way you look at it. And you can't go from point A to point B and stop at some third point and end up going quicker. So the metric automatically finds the quickest way between two points. That's what that triangle inequality says. Okay, so in a metric space, what does it mean to be convergent? Well, you have a sequence, which is x sub 1, x sub 2, and so on, just x for the every natural number. Uh, note that the quantity x sub n for every n in n is an ordered list. It's not a set. I wrote that it's a subset of the metric space because that's pretty standard butchery of notation. But do note that those that's not actually a set. It's a sequence. So what does it mean to be convergent? It means that there is a limit. There exists an x in x for every epsilon greater than 0. There exists a natural number n. If your index is bigger than capital N, then your distance is less than epsilon. So out in the tail, it gets arbitrarily close to the limit and stays there. What does it mean to be bounded? Well, if you have a set E of your metric space, uh, you can pick a point in E. There exists a point in E. Um, you may not even have to do that. You could take the origin, for instance. So mm, depends on who you ask. So pick a point in E. Then there exists a natural, or a positive number m, such that your set E is contained in the ball centered at your point of radius m. Basically, you can put the set in the ball. That's what it means to be bounded. All right. So let's take a look at how to prove that bounded sets are um, convergent sets are bounded in a metric space. So we're going to pick a convergent sequence with limit x. We're going to take epsilon equal to 1. Notice we're not trying to prove it's convergent. We're given that it's convergent, so this is the first time I've taken epsilon equal to a specific value. So epsilon is 1. By definition, there exists a natural number n such that when your index is bigger than capital N, the distance between x sub n and x is less than epsilon, which is 1. So what I've done is I've put the tail in a ball of radius 1. But then there's only a finite number of stuff before that. So let's just take the max of how far away things are from x up until they're within that one ball. So we're going to take m to be the max of dx1 and x plus 1. Because uh, that means it's definitely outside. All the way up to xn minus 1 and x plus 1. Because if these are all really close to x, like the sequence starts really close to x and then kind of goes away and comes back, um, you want to make sure that your uh, max, that your m, is bigger than 1. So that way you get the epsilon equals 1 thing going on. But then you don't want to take it to be just the max of x1 and x all the way to the distance between x and minus 1 and x. You don't want to just take it to be the max of those and 1, because then if one of them happens, if, uh, say, x2 happens to be exactly one distance away from x, you won't actually have captured that in your ball. 
So that's why we add one. We just take whatever we chose epsilon to be and add it to the distances, take the max of the distances for the stuff that wasn't contained in the epsilon mole. And now what we do is we observe that that means that xn, the sequence, is contained in bxm. So it's bounded. That's it. So now let's go ahead and write this up as an actual proof. So let's take a look. Convergent sequences are bounded. Well, we need a convergent sequence. So let xn for every natural number be a sequence in a metric space x comma d with limit x in x, just as specific as we can be. Taking epsilon equal to 1 in the definition of convergence gives us there exists an n in n such that n, little n, is greater than or equal to capital N implies the distance between xn and x is less than 1. So all of xn except x1 to xn minus 1 are in b x1. Taking m to be the max of d x1 x plus 1 up to d xn minus 1 comma x plus 1, that should be a capital N there, shouldn't it? These are things you want to watch out for. It's never, never hurts to always be proofreading your own proofs, even when you've finished them. So what we have is that <clears throat> taking m to be that max gives us that our sequence is contained in the ball xm. Therefore, it is bounded. <clears throat> All right. So I will like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if there's anything uh, you disagree with or would like to see done in a different way. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see me prove. And I will see you guys in the next video.